Hello, in this video, we are going to talk about basics of computer system validation in pharma industry. So that you understand what computer system validation means, how computerized systems are classified, and why is it necessary to validate computerized systems. First, let's define validation and computerized system separately to better grasp the concept of computer system validation. So according to FDA, validation is confirmation by objective evidence that the previously established requirements for the use of process or system are met. To understand this definition, imagine a pharmaceutical company is developing a new medication. To get the desired final product, raw material has to go through series of steps like drug discovery, preclinical development, clinical testing and manufacturing. So for example in the manufacturing, there will be detailed recipe and set of procedures that outlines how to manufacture the drug safely and effectively. These procedures are previously established requirements. Now before the company can distribute the medicine to the patient, they need to validate the manufacturing process. This involves producing a batch of medication while closely monitoring every step from mixing ingredients to packaging. The company collects data and performs tests at various stages of production, creating the objective evidence. If the company can show that each batch consistently meets the standard set in the recipe, then they have successfully validated the manufacturing process. This validation ensures that every pill or injection is of high quality and safe for patients to use. So basically to recap, validation is ensuring that the requirements expected out of system or process are met. Let's understand what computerized system is. In simpler terms, computerized system is a combination of computer hardware, software and related equipment that work together to perform specific tasks in the pharmaceutical or any other regulated industries. This could range from manufacturing the control system to the laboratory instruments. Computer as we all know is basically a desktop or server that processes information. And software here refers to the programs or applications installed on the computer, controlling various aspects of manufacturing process. For instance, it could manage the mixing of ingredients or the temperature during drug synthesis. Hardware are additional devices connected to the computer. In pharmaceutical setting, this could include sensor measuring temperature, pressure or any other critical parameters. These sensors provide data to the computerized system. And process for example can be standard operating procedure that plant operator need to follow. So now let's see how computerized systems are categorized. As we already know computerized systems as softwares, hardwares and processes. So one may question why bother categorizing it further. The simpler answer is categorization helps us in determining strategy and scope of system validation depending on the complexity of hardware or software. Softwares are categorized into four categories and hardware into two based on the GAM5 guidelines. In this video, we are only going to focus on software categories. So the software categories are Category 1, Category 3, Category 4 and Category 5. 
no i did not miss the category 2 it is actually discontinued as per game 5 category 2 that is firmware was depreciated because when version 4 of game was created the firmware differed from rest of the categories with its own characteristics today it has evolved so that most of the firmware can be classified under category 3 or 4 or 5 category 2 disappeared that's why there are only categories 1, 3, 4 and 5. Remember, the more standardized and tested the software is, the lower its category and therefore the less validation is required. On the other hand, the more personalized the software, the more the need of configuration and the least test conducted during development will require more and detailed validation. Let's see one by one what these software categories are. First is category 1. Category 1 software is also known as infrastructure software. These are basically already established or commercially available softwares. Example includes operating system or antivirus. There won't be any different validation approach for this category. Instead, the softwares will indirectly be tested along with category 3, 4 or 5. Next is category 3. Category 3, previously known as standard software in game 4, has been renamed to non-configured product. This category includes non-configurable software used as installed and may also include software that can be configured but is used either unconfigured or with the standard defaults provided by the software supplier. Example of category 3 software include non-configurable commercially of the shell software that is the COTS, laboratory instruments and software used without modification to meet business needs. As part of validation approach for category 3, suppliers work in software development can be used to save validation effort as functional and design specifications are not expected from the user. User requirement specifications are necessary and should focus on key aspect of use. This category software has an advantage that the operation cannot be modified, which means the risk arising from incorrect operation is reduced. Non-configured product software is typically used for non-critical applications such as laboratory instruments. Category 4 Category 4 has been defined as configured software which includes software such as laboratory information management systems, supervisory control and data acquisition systems, distributed control systems, and chromatography data systems. These are examples of software that are configured to meet specific business needs. The validation approach for category 4 system involves a comprehensive validation strategy due to the criticality of process they support. For this category, the V model usually includes the traceability of user requirements, functional specifications and design specifications, as well as design, installation, operation and performance qualification. What is V model we will see in subsequent videos. The major difference between category 3 and 4 software as mentioned earlier is the ability to modify the function of the software to match the business process. One important thing to remember while understanding GAM categories is same system can be used under different category. For example, LIMS can be used as category 4 in one organization and category 5 in some other. Category 5 This category includes custom software that is written from scratch to fulfill the specific business need. In GAM5, category 5 is referred to as bespoke software. The meaning of bespoke itself is made for particular user or customer. Due to its customized nature, bespoke software falls into category 5, which signifies the highest level of complexity and risk. The validation approach for category 5 software involves comprehensive verification activities and documentation to ensure that software is suitable for its intended use. As example, LIMS can be used as an GAM5 software. 
in the validation strategy for this category of systems it is recommended to put more focus on specification and testing modules design documentation and system operation technical support updates and change control so we saw what is validation what computerized system includes and how computerized systems are classified but why is it necessary to validate computerized system so there will be computerized systems used here here and here in form of softwares and hardware so if we fuck up somewhere along this line it will directly or indirectly lead to the poor quality product which can cause adverse effect on patient health so that's it in this video if you like this video do press that like button and stay tuned